Hey Tank Watchers, Jack Byer here with NASA Space Flight. Welcome to this week's Starship Update. As usual, we start off by saying thanks to Mary at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. She's a Boca Chica resident and NASA Space Flight team member who tirelessly documents Starship development every single day. Unless otherwise noted, all the photos and videos you're about to see are from Mary. So, thanks Mary. It's been a crazy week in Starship development, so let's get right into it. First up, on Sunday the 8th, the first two sections of Super Heavy Booster Number 1's lower liquid oxygen tank were lifted into the high bay for stacking. This mirrors how they assemble Starship, starting with the liquid oxygen tank, stacking a common dome on top of that, then the methane tank and forward dome on top of that, and then stacking that entire assembly on top of a thrust section. We're currently seeing that same flow progress in the mid bay with Starship serial number 11, but more on that later. On Friday the 13th, the crane that had been connected to those two segments was disconnected. Here you can see the load spreader lowered to the ground. It would make sense that this means that the two LOX tank sections have been stacked and welded together. If so, booster number one is finally starting to be assembled, and I can't wait until we're able to get a better glimpse of it. Next up, all week we've seen work on a new nose cone progress inside the nose cone fabrication tent. I used to think that these boxy structures were flap mounting points, but it looks like instead there's some sort of alignment jig. They've been busy installing aero covers and working on the flap mount. We don't know for sure yet, but it would make sense if this ends up being serial number 9's nose cone. On Saturday, it was rolled outside and over to the windbreak, presumably where its flaps will be installed before it gets stacked on a barrel section. I know a lot of people are curious, but we don't yet know if they'll stack the nose cone onto serial number 9 at the build site, say, in the high bay, or at the launch site like they did with serial number 8. We'll just have to wait and see. Speaking of serial number 8, this has been a wild week for it. On Monday, there was testing all the way to the end of the window at 9 p.m. local, but no engine firing. On Tuesday, there appeared to be an aborted static fire attempt earlier in the window, followed by a recycle and a single engine static fire that produced a good amount of unknown debris. Scott Manley seems to think, and I would agree, that this seems to be just thermal protection material and concrete getting kicked up by the engine firing not parts of the engine itself. This is bolstered by the fact that on Wednesday, they did not remove a Raptor engine. Check out Scott's in-depth video analysis for more on this and the craziness that happened later on Thursday. What craziness on Thursday, you ask? Well, first, based on Boca Chica residents getting a hazard warning and our own information, we expected a two-engine Raptor static fire. Then, later in the day, we heard that plans had changed to include other types of testing and not an engine firing. But the situation in Boca Chica is fluid and, well, clearly they ended up going for a static fire. This was indeed a two Raptor engine static fire, again from the header tanks like the one on Tuesday, and again kicking up some debris. But this time was a much different and much more dangerous situation. Shortly after static fire, what looked like molten metal, although I'm not sure about that, could be seen dribbling out of serial number 8's engine skirt area, potentially from a Raptor engine. Serial number 8 looked like it was frozen in the same state as it had been immediately after firing, holding for some reason, and we were quite curious what was going on. Luckily, photographer and all-around good human being, Austin Bernard, got a reply from his bro Elon on Twitter and gave us some critical information. Vehicle pneumatics were down. SpaceX was unable to open any valves and relieve pressure in the LOX header tank in the nose cone, and pressure was rising. If that pressure built up high enough, it could have resulted in a destructive outcome potentially catastrophically so. Luckily, there was a burst disc in the plumbing somewhere, and the header tank welds held up to a high enough pressure for the burst disc to pop first, saving the day. It was a nail biter for a while there, but serial number eight lived to see another sunrise. Elon tweeted that the burst disc worked and that they'll probably have to replace at least one Raptor engine. He also said that the cause of pneumatics loss was that they might have melted an engine preburner or hot gas manifold. Sure enough, on Saturday, we saw a Raptor removed from serial number 8, Raptor 32 to be exact. Though outwardly it looked okay, I shudder to think about what a total mess it could be on the inside. Raptor 32 was brought back to the build site, and we'll have to wait and see which Raptor replaces it. Maybe Raptor serial number 42, which was delivered to the build site on the 8th. 
hopefully, this won't be too big of a setback for serial number 8's flight. I could be super pessimistic here and say, oh, it won't fly for another month, but truly, we don't know. Maybe I'm just caught in the Boca Chica reality distortion field, but provided inspections of serial number 8 don't find anything too major. The 15km flight could happen as soon as they're able to install a new Raptor and finish the current engine testing campaign with the expected 3-engine static fire. Of course, an issue could pop up during or before that firing and result in another slip to the schedule, or worse, destruction of the vehicle. But that is why they're building so many prototypes. Speaking of other Starship prototypes, on Wednesday, seal number 12's thrust section was stacked on top of a leg skirt, forming a full aft section. You can see a forward dome hanging out in front of this new assembly. We don't know, but I wonder if that will also be for serial number 12. On Friday, serial number 11's common dome section was lifted into the midbay for stacking atop its LOX tank sections. During the lift, the methane header tank was visible, which was super cool to see. Also on Friday, serial number 11's LOX downcomer was installed in its forward dome section. Once SpaceX is done welding the common dome section to the stack, this forward dome section will be ready for stacking as well. There is no slow going in Boca Chica. Last couple of things. On Saturday, the Liebherr LR1600-2 crane, I call Tankzilla, has had some of its counterweights moved from the gas well lot to the build site on a modular transporter. Why? I don't know. On Friday, a new thrust dome, or aft bulkhead, or aft dome, or thrust bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, was visible outside. We don't yet know what vehicle that will be for. And a large amount of equipment has been delivered to the gas well lot. I've seen some people saying this machinery will be used to produce liquid oxygen or nitrogen or something on site, but I have no idea if that's the case. I know I say I don't know a lot, but I'd rather be honest than make stuff up. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. If you like this video, hit the like button, and if you don't already, subscribe. If you'd like to support what we do, we've got a merch store with cool t-shirts and other NASA spaceflight gear. And we've got the YouTube membership program with perks like Discord access, members only emoji, and preview videos that go live before the daily videos do. These weekly videos are a work in progress, so please let us know what you think in the comments. With your support, we'll keep making this series and everything we do better with every release. And of course, thanks to Mary at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter for her tireless efforts in documenting Starship development. Thank you, Mary. Okay, that's it for this week. I'll see you next week. Be excellent to each other.